Today we come to the end of another church year and we come to the end of this sermon series we've been doing called God's Cure for the Election Infection. So far we've uh, talked about two prescriptions for the election infection. The first prescription that we received was lament and repent over the mess that we find ourselves in in this sin-broken world because in doing so we begin to find ourselves on the journey for hope and healing in Christ. Second prescription was to return and relearn. Return to our risen Savior so we can relearn the purpose that he's given us and the power he's given us through the Holy Spirit so we can carry out that purpose. And then today the third prescription that we will receive is to care for those who are forgotten and rejected by others and to share the blessings of God's kingdom with them. And that's exactly what we see, even though it may not real seem like it, in that reading today in the gospel as we see Jesus encounter with this Canaanite woman. Today's gospel account uh, shows Jesus caring and sharing. Now, as you heard that account read, though, your first reaction may have been one of surprise because it seems like Jesus is acting in a way that's really not characteristic of him. And we're going to address that in just a moment. But first, what we need to discover is how did he get to that point where he even had an encounter with a woman like this in the first place? And so we're going to go to an area in the region of Galilee where Jesus is wrapping up his ministry in that region. He and his disciples docked at a seaside village called Gennesaret, and you can see it there just on the northwest corner of the Sea of Galilee. And the kingdom of God was on full display uh, when Jesus got there. People were bringing their sick to Jesus to have him heal them, and everybody that they brought was healed by Jesus. It was a powerful display of the kingdom of God. Well, the hatred of the Jewish religious leaders was also on display, uh, full display. They followed Jesus there because they wanted to try to dig up some dirt they could use against him so that they could discredit and destroy Jesus and his ministry. This time what they did was they blew the whistle on Jesus' disciples. They came to Jesus and they accused his disciples of not washing their hands properly before they ate. This was a violation of the Jewish religious tradition. According to the, these religious leaders, Jesus' disciples had made themselves unclean because of what they were now putting into their mouths. And so Jesus responded to them, corrected them, and exposed their hypocrisy. He told them that this legalistic obsession with keeping these man-made religious traditions was actually causing them to break God's commands. It's not what goes into your mouth that makes you unclean. It's what comes out of the sinful heart. That's, that's what's unclean. Well, the Jewish religious leaders didn't like his response. And we're told in the Gospel of Matthew, the other uh, parallel account of, of this story, that they went back to the very same disciples they had just tattled on, and they told the disciples they were offended by what Jesus said to them. You can imagine how frustrated Jesus must have been with the way the, the f religious leaders were acting towards him. But it didn't surprise him because he had gotten used to that. You can also imagine he was somewhat frustrated but not surprised by the disciples' response because uh, after Jesus dealt with the Jewish religious leaders, they asked Jesus what he meant when he explained to them what it is that makes a person unclean. So Jesus had to go into great detail so that he could explain to the disciples what he was talking about. Well, after he did that, they left the region of Galilee. Uh, Jesus took his disciples from Gennesaret, there on the northwest side of the Sea of Galilee, up to the region of Tyre and Sidon. And so as you can see, this was a long journey, and it was a journey through the mountains. And it was a journey into hostile territory. Things were hostile enough back in the region of Galilee because you had the Jewish religious leaders constantly hunting down Jesus and, and nipping at his heels. But the region of Tyre and Sidon, that pagan land has a long, hostile history against God's people. Remember Queen Jezebel, the wicked queen in Old Testament times, King Ahab's wife? She threatened to kill Elijah after he had won the victory over the prophets of Baal on Mount Carmel. Tyre was her home place. That whole region was a pagan land worshiping pagan gods that uh, hated God and his people. Why would they go there of all places? 
Well, either Jesus really wanted to get away from the region of Galilee, or he had a special mission he wanted to accomplish while he was there. And while we could say it was both, it was definitely more the latter. Jesus had an important mission he wanted to accomplish there, and he had an important person he wanted to meet there. And that person was this Canaanite woman. When Jesus and the disciples arrived in the region, we're told that Jesus tried to just slip in quietly and get into a house where he could just have some peace and quiet. But like all the other times, wherever Jesus would show up, the word would get out, and immediately people uh, started coming in droves, and they were bringing with them people who were sick so that Jesus could, could heal them. And one of the persons that came was this Canaanite woman. She was begging that Jesus would heal her little daughter of an unclean spirit. The disciples rejected her, and they told Jesus to just send her away because she's nothing but an unclean pagan woman. Jesus didn't send her away. But when you listen to his response, it sure sounds like he's rejecting her. Listen to what he says. First, let the children eat all they want, for it is not right to take the children's bread and toss it to the dogs. Did you hear what Jesus called this woman from Canaan? A canine. He called her and her people a dog. Now, let me ask you this. Can you imagine if Jesus were living in America today with our culture the way it is, and he called a foreign woman a dog, what kind of responses do you think he would get? Would people say he was sexist, racist, xenophobic, a bigot, hateful, intolerant, offensive? Probably. And as we uh, live out our lives in this culture, we have to at least be concerned, don't we, about the fact that Jesus called a foreign woman a dog? Or should we really be concerned? Haven't we used the same kind of language? Let's see. Have you ever said of someone who experienced sudden fortune, every dog has his day? Have you ever used as an excuse for not changing, you can't teach an old dog new tricks? Have you ever said of a person who's really driven, they're really a bulldog? Have you ever said of someone who's the top of an organization, they're the top dog? Have you ever gone to a child who's moping and pouting and said, why the sad puppy eyes? Have you ever come home exhausted and say, I'm dog tired, I worked like a dog today? Can we agree that by accusing Jesus of doing something wrong here, we may be barking up the wrong tree? Can we agree that it's best to call off the dogs till we find out just what Jesus meant by this metaphor that he used when he called the woman a dog? If we can agree to that, we're going to learn a lot of important things today that Jesus was teaching his disciples and that he wants to teach us through his encounter with this woman. Let's start with this. In the Greek language, there's two words for dog. One word describes wild, ferocious dogs that would travel in packs eating any garbage, dead animals, or anything else that they could get their jaws on. This is the word that the Jews used to describe people who were not Jews, the unclean pagan people. This is the word they would use to describe them as a derogatory word that the disciples would have used too in reference to this woman. But that's not the word Jesus used here. Jesus used an endearing term when he described this woman, a term... That described her as a cute little household pet. For those of you who have puppies, think about this. Think about what you were willing to pay to bring that puppy into your home. Think about how much you're willing to pay for food, grooming, medical care, maybe health insurance, toys, and clothing for that puppy. And think of what happens when that puppy gets old and dies. You feel like you've lost a member of your family, right? That's the image Jesus wants you to have when you think about this metaphor that he's using in reference to this woman. Now, the conversation still seems confusing, and so we're going to try to clear up that confusion. Here's a woman who's begging Jesus to heal her young daughter from an unclean spirit. She's hopeful that Jesus is going to allow her little daughter to experience some of the blessings of the kingdom of God. So why does Jesus respond the way he does? Why does he say, first let the children eat all they want, for it's not right to take the children's bread and toss it to the dogs? Wouldn't Jesus want this woman's little girl to experience the blessings of God's kingdom? Wouldn't Jesus want this little girl to be healed? 
As you look at his response, you may think, no. But if you look at it closely, you might see something different. First, let the children eat all they want. See, it says the blessings of God's kingdom would come first to God's children, the Jews. Then it would go and overflow to the rest of the world. It wouldn't be right for Jesus, the king of the Jews, to bypass the Jewish people and give God's blessings to the Gentiles first. First, he would give his blessings to the the Jews, God's children, then those blessings would overflow to the Gentiles. Jesus wasn't putting this woman down with these words. What he was actually doing was testing his faith to teach something to his disciples. And based on her response, she passed the test. Let's look at what she says on the next slide. Lord, even the dogs under the table eat the children's crumbs. Notice she didn't get offended by what Jesus said. She didn't say, how dare you call me a little puppy? She responded with faith and humility and said, Lord, even the dogs under the table eat the children's crumbs. See, she knew that Jesus had every right to reject her because she was not one of God's covenant's children. She was not a Jew. And she actually had come from a land that was an enemy of God and his people. She understood that God's kingdom blessings were intended first for the Jews. But she also understood that God's promises from way back pointed to the fact that there would be more than enough of those kingdom blessings to overflow to the rest of the world. And her hope was simply that her daughter could receive some of those kingdom blessings now. And she believed that even the crumbs from Jesus would be enough to heal her daughter of this unclean spirit. And it was because of this humble statement of faith that Jesus told her, your daughter's healed. And she was instantly. By the time the daughter got home, or by the time the mother got home, the daughter was already healed. And so what Jesus showed was that the blessings of God's kingdom flow to all who trust in him, not just the Jews. It's a beautiful story about the woman's faith in God and of Jesus' faithfulness to extend the blessings of God's kingdom to the whole world. (coughs) But this woman's glimpse into the blessings of the kingdom of God and her willingness to just settle for crumbs misses the grand vision that God has for the blessings he wants to give to the whole world. When God offers his grace through Jesus, he doesn't just offer crumbs. And Jesus demonstrated that when he and the disciples left this region of Tyre and Sidon and went back towards the Sea of Galilee. Instead of going to the west side where the Jewish people were, Jesus took the disciples over to the east side of the Sea of Galilee where the Gentiles were. And just as Jesus had fed thousands of Jewish people with uh, bread and fish, with lots of bread left over, So on the east side of the Sea of Galilee, Jesus did the same thing with the Gentiles. He fed thousands of people with lots of bread left over. Just as Jesus had brought healing to the sick and the people with unclean spirits on the west side, the Jewish people, so on the east side, Jesus did the same thing for the Gentile people. Jesus was showing that this daughter of this Canaanite woman was like a foretaste of the blessings that God would pass on to the whole world through Jesus. Because of Jesus, Gentiles would no longer be excluded from God's kingdom, but would be full beneficiaries of all the blessings that come from that kingdom. And thank God that includes you and me then, right? Because we, most of us are those Gentiles, aren't we? Look at what St. Paul says. So in Christ Jesus, you who are all children of God through faith, For all of you who were baptized into Christ have clothed yourselves with Christ. There is neither Jew nor Gentile, neither slave nor free, nor is there male and female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. If you belong to Christ, then you are all Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. So regardless of our backgrounds, there's a place in God's kingdom for all of us. In the waters of baptism, we all become one in Christ Jesus and we all become heirs of God's kingdom. That's the beautiful promise of today's message. Now as I close, I want to leave you with a couple of takeaways. One is this. You notice that Jesus was willing to go to people that his culture would have excluded and avoided because he wanted to give his kingdom's blessings to those people. And later today in the service, you're going to hear ways that he's working through our church to continue doing the same today. But the most important takeaway I want to leave you with is this. 
Jesus wants you to see him in that foreign woman from a pagan land. Let me explain what I mean. What this woman did for her daughter gives us a picture of what Jesus did for us and for the whole world. This woman was willing to do whatever it took, even if it meant facing humiliation and rejection, if it could mean cleansing and saving her daughter. And Jesus, a short time later, would do whatever it took if it meant facing humiliation and rejection, if it meant cleansing and saving the whole world. Jesus was willing to humble himself and leave heaven's glory so he could become one of us and then provide salvation for all of us from sin and death and the devil. He was willing to make an animal shelter, the place of his birth, and a criminal's cross, the place of his death. He was willing to face humiliation and rejection and even death to pay for our sins. And because he was willing to do that for us, even though we don't deserve crumbs from a holy, righteous God, he's given us himself, the bread of life, and all the blessings that come with him. And as those who have received those blessings of God's kingdom, he calls us now to care enough for others that we would share those blessings too. Amen.